Hey guys, Simon from Adventure Israel. Today we're going to show you how to make a Mojave bird trap. For those of you who don't know what a Mojave bird trap is, it's basically if you can remember when you were a kid, you used to make cardboard box traps to catch the neighbor's cats. Um, you know, the one through the stick that would keep the box open. Uh, the idea behind it is very similar, uh, except what we're going to do is we're going to make it that it could be triggered from the inside as opposed to having to pull a string or, you know, pull something from the outside. Uh, so basically this is a automatic trap. This can be set and forgotten and, uh, and then you just check them up and, uh, and that's it. Guys, I have to mention this. Uh, check your local laws for trapping and which species are allowed to be trapped. Um, you know, every, every country has its different, uh, you know, regulations. Here in Israel, I don't know if, uh, if it's legal to trap. Um, this specific trap, um, mostly what it's going to produce is birds that uh, feed on the bottom. So here it's going to be quail, um, or any other kind of scavenger. Um, again, I don't know if it's legal to use this trap here. So I'm going to show you how to make it. And it's up to you, to, you know, to do what you want to do. Uh, I'm just going to show you how to make it. Later I'll post up a video on uh, me using this on my chickens in my backyard. So if you can catch chickens, you can catch any bird. Um, but again, check your local laws and regulations on trapping, hunting, uh, and which are protected species. So the materials that we're going to need for this trap are some paracord, a knife, and preferably a saw. Uh, now I'm just going to use the one on my Leatherman, uh, but any saw is, you know, good. And a whole lot of long straight sticks. Um, now the trap I'm going to make is going to be relatively large. Uh, you can size it to however you want, you know, probably best to suit it to whatever you're going after. Um, but I'm going to make one that's about that long. Okay of our paracord um, and I, again I, I've mentioned many times on why I love paracord uh, this is just another awesome you know thing you can do with paracord uh, again you can use any other kind of line but you want strong line okay so what you're gonna do is just gonna unravel some of your paracord hold on Now, I'm going to take my two biggest, straightest, longest sticks, uh, which I've gathered. Uh, probably going to want to use. It should be roughly, roughly the same size. Um, and this is going to be our base. Okay? So, let's move that out of the way. You're gonna lay them flat. Let's get rid of that. Now, turd. Lay them flat. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your paracord and we're gonna tie one end here and one end here. So I wanna measure how much paracord I wanna use. I would say that this is about good. Now I wanna leave a little bit more for the knots. So let me let me take let me take this much, okay? This is about a meter, a meter of, uh... Okay. Now, again, remember what I said about paracord? You just yank out those inner core. Okay, and you're left with the sheath and your seven strands. Okay? I'm going to set those aside. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to cut another section exactly the same size for the other side of the sticks. Okay, so we're going to measure. Not there. Okay. And again, you just pull it out. side and we can begin now what you're going to want to do to start off is just make 
eight. Simple knot. Uh, you can use a clove hitch. I like clove hitches because uh, they're really strong and tight. Quick clove hitch, nice and strong. We're not going anywhere, okay? Now, take my other stick and do the same here. Um, but what I realized just now is that the clove hitch is taking up too much rope. So, get that. what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a slip knot. Nice and tight. And then just lock it off. Okay. And now I got the other side. To do again. Plain slip knot. Make sure that you don't waste too much cordage. Okay, make sure that end is tight. And nice and tight. And lock it off. Okay. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our other end. We're gonna flip this over. And then we're gonna do the same to this side. Okay. So now we have the basis to the frame of our Mojave bird trap. Here comes the fun part. So what you do now is you take your sticks and you do a twist. See that? Now you have an X in the middle with your cords. Okay, and this is the frame. Now what we do, once we have the frame set, we're gonna take our sticks. You wanna use the longer ones first, and you're gonna start weaving them. You're gonna take one in, you're gonna push it to the back. Uh, the first couple ones going to be difficult because it doesn't have a shape yet, um, but you know. Okay. Grab this. Alright, see that? Back here. Okay. Okay, then I'm going to take my other sticks. Two in, and now two this way. Okay. Now we need one for the other side. There you go. All right, guys, we're back. Um, this is the finished product. Um, you know, you can just spend more time adjusting, you know, each uh, branch. But uh, you can see I can pick it up. This one's actually pretty heavy. And this is the trap. All right, guys. One way we can make a trigger for this trap is by taking a long straight stick. 
and that left the repair cord inners that we had. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to flip the trap over. Yep. And what we're going to do is this is the let's say this is the the back end. Let's, let's say this is the, this is the back end here. So we're going to take our paracord inner and we're going to tie this string over here. Okay. Okay, just two overhead knots, nothing fancy. Okay, maybe one more. That's one. And we'll take another one. Do the same on this side. Strands. What we're going to do is we're going to take our stick and we're going to tie them to our stick, okay? But the idea is that we want to make sure that it's just sticking out of the box, so around here. What you can do is you can just tie a clove hitch like we did before. Just tie a clove hitch. Is it outside? It's good. Now we have to make sure that the other one is exactly the same length and doesn't have less tension or more tension than the other stick. So let's say this is the center of the trap. Both of them are tense. So I'm going to tie this length here. Again, making sure that it's all nice and kosher. Okay, now that we have the stick secured, and we see that it's the right tension is applied, now we're going to show you how to set the trap. Okay, let me show you guys how to set the trap. So basically, very simple. You gotta find yourself a nice, flat, stable ground. Uh, now you take the stick. Again, we see that uh, here it's loose. So what you can just do is wrap it once here, wrap it once there. Do one more time here. Now you want it to just barely sit. Just to, hold on. Hold on. Okay. Okay, now what I've done is I've put a rock on the stick because uh, this ground is actually very soft. So what was happening was the stick was sagging. Uh, but let me just show you what happens if, uh, if a bird trips the wire. So that, now again, like I said before, um, the heavier the trap is, the quicker it's going to fall. Uh, but the, you know, the idea is basically the same. Um, and uh, hopefully, we'll post up another video of uh, of us catching some chickens with this. Uh, so, if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe uh, to Adventure Israel, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks.